Good morning, everyone. Let's open a word uh, in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you that we can be here. Thank you for just providing this uh, building for us to meet in and for the everything you just uh, um, being here as a uh, family of believers. We just pray for that your Holy Spirit would just guide us today, listening to the, uh, the sermon and help us to worship you in our with our hearts and souls and minds and we just pray you just uh, just watch over us and help us just to uh, remove all the distractions from the world and help us just to focus on you today help us to go out here at the end of the service help us to be energized for the remaining week we just thank you so much for uh, for everything in jesus name i pray amen would you please stand as we sing the first two verses of hymn 92 Oh, how I love Jesus. First two verses. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh. Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood. The sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Please be seated. Morning. Welcome to Wagon Town Chapel here this morning. We pray that it's a blessing for you to be here, as I say, each and every week. You can follow along in the bulletin for the announcements of things that are happening and coming up as well. Uh, you have the insert in your bulletin for the potluck. That's uh, the 23rd. It's a couple weeks away yet, so but that would be the next potluck. It will be June 23rd um, as well. Uh, you can look on the back. You can see the looking ahead of things happening Uh, You do have Sharing and Caring Picnic coming up on the 18th. Our archery camp is the 18th to the 20th, and uh, that's that's full already. We had to shut down the registration so we can handle what we have, and so that's a a good turnout for that. Just pray for that as well. And then we have on the 24th we have uh, we are we are providing dinner for the camp at the Old Mills, one of their day camp or one of their night uh, one of their camps that they're having. And we have the 24th on that Monday night. So we're looking for people to help out with that. Uh, There's a sign-up out in the foyer under the sign-up area there. And uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, if you help to be there to help prep and get the dinner ready. And then 5 o'clock is like serving and cleanup. So um, I just have lines on there. So just put on there. Put put next to your name what what time you would be there um, so I know we, we have some of you that do it every year. You don't have to do it every this year, but, um, but if you want to help out with that, and then um, that would be the 24th of, of June. And then, of course, Vacation Bible School is not till end of July, so we have some time for that yet. But, uh, but we'll be looking for, for leaders and helpers for Vacation Bible School, so you'll be seeing some things on the screen and in the bulletin over the next couple of weeks as well. We are going to do a graduation Sunday. Uh, We have about five graduates um, from either college or high school here. And uh, so we will be doing that, but I'm trying to get them all lined up on the same Sunday. So right now we've got to push it to July, but but there will be a Sunday in July where we do have graduation Sunday. So we'll be honoring our graduates as well too. And uh, so... Uh, but be looking to, to, to see all of that. Be praying for the things that are coming up. Uh, this Saturday is our 3D archery shoot. So, so pray for that. It's always an opportunity to share the gospel with those that are there. And uh, so just pray for, I don't, I didn't mean look at the weather. Hopefully the weather's going to be good. 
Um, but just pray for good weather, and uh, so we'll be having that out at Camp of the Old Mill this Saturday. So let's ask for prayer for that, and be praying now for our archery camp as well, too. Um, that's in a couple weeks, and as I said, I think we have like close to 60 kids signed up, so, um, so we'll be doing that again. And so pray for the hearts of those kids and parents that will be here um, for that as well. Um, so be praying for those things. We're going to ask. I'll probably have a sign up next. I might have it up there. I forget. I think I have it signed up for for uh, brownies for the closing of our archery camp. So that's not till the 20th of June. But if you would like to help out in making brownies or buying brownies, whatever you choose to do for our closing night for archery camp, um, you can sign up for that too. So. Check the sign-ups. There's those two out there. But we do welcome you to Wagontown Chapel. If you're visiting with us here for the first time, there should be an offering. Not an offering. There should be a, a welcome card in the pew in front of you. And you can fill that out so we can get to know you a little bit better as well, too. But we always welcome you to Wagontown Chapel. On this first Sunday in June, we're going to have the praise team going to come up and lead us in two songs here.
comfortable, join in. Follow along in your care and prayer. See the names that are listed there. I don't think we have any new ones offhand, but continue to be praying for the ones that we do have on here. And uh, for those that are healing still from, from surgeries. And then, of course, you have those that are battling cancer, those that are recovering from uh, strokes and all of that. And that's going to take time or uh, might never get back to the normal. But... So be praying for, for each of them 
uh, with their battles and all of that. Certainly we ought to be praying for our country. A lot going on in our country we need to be praying for. And for those in positions of authority, our president, vice president, all of those to whom surround them. And uh, uh, we need to be praying continually for, for God to work. Uh, he is at work. Um, but we need to be praying continually that, that we would be trusting God with who, for what he's doing. He's sovereign. He's in control of everything. And so may we continue to be trusting the Lord through that as well. And uh, also you have your unspoken prayer request. Uh, that are on your own hearts and minds, things that you're dealing with uh, behind closed doors and, and uh, struggles to which you're facing. So be praying for each other as a church family and continue to be praying for uh, our church here. As I already mentioned, we have a couple archery programs coming up. Saturday's one and then later in the month is the other one, the bigger one for the kids. So we have to be praying for the hearts of those. This Saturday is going to be mostly just adult men that will be there, and um, uh, I forget how many we have signed up. There might be 12 signed up or something like that, um, but we have, we have that. And so, again, it's an opportunity to share the gospel uh, with each of them. So pray for, for, pray for good weather and pray that we can uh, have that and, and do that well Saturday. Um, all the other things that we have, again, continue to be praying for um, our missionaries. Our missionary of the month is uh, the Oliviers. Uh, that's Gerard and his wife and family. They're in South Africa. And uh, they are the ones that are, uh, they just got done interpreting the Bible into the Makua tribe. And so right now is an important time. They are meeting now, training other men from, the, from those tribes to now um, they all just got their brand new Bible in their language, and they are, and, and, and so now they are in this training period. They are teaching them how to, how, how to read the Bible, how to interpret the Bible, and then again, again, there's, there's still much time, but uh, to also train them to be uh, teaching the Bible to, to, to those um, of their own as well, and even become pastors as well too. So, um, so, so they've been doing that. I've been getting um, text or voice, voice calls uh, all, every day this week from, from Gerard. He, he sends them at 1 o'clock in the morning because it's, it's like 7 o'clock in the morning in South Africa. Uh, luckily, he doesn't alert me at that time. I usually get them when I wake up and listen to them, but, um, uh, but they're great. I will show you a picture next week uh, of, of I think there's like 16 men who all got their new Bibles and, and they're in this training period. So be praying for, for this time. It's a very important time. Uh, and they're going over the gospel. They're going over who is Jesus, who is God, and all of that through their own um, Bible as, as far as it being in their own language. And, uh, and it's, so it's a huge training uh, time right now for them. And so there's a lot of work being done. And so be praying for... For, for, this, for this time, especially this, this month, is, is an important time. And so, uh, so just pray that, that these men would get that. So that is Gerard Olivier and his family. Gerard's doing it, and there's other people that are doing it, but, but Gerard is the one to whom we support and all of that too. There's another guy named Domingo and uh, a few other people that are in the process of helping teach and train and preach. And so, so, so pray for this opportunity right now. Um, for that in this month. So let's pause and let's go before the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for, for your glorious name of who you are, that there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray today, Lord, even before we get any further in our prayer time, Lord, that we would thank you and praise you for who you are, for your holiness, for your grace and your mercy that we get entirely all day long and we deserve none of it. So we thank you for that. I pray, Lord, there may be one today that does not know you as Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray today would be the day that they repent and turn their life to you. I pray, Lord, that you would work through this time together. We pray for all the prayer requests. Lord, you know them all. We, and we thank you for being a God who is all-knowing, who, who not only knows the prayer of every single person who's praying, 
Right now in the entire world, there could be millions of people praying and you hear and know every request. And not only are you able to know them, to hear them, to listen to them, but you have the power to act on them. You have the wisdom to, to make all right choices, the, the, the best choice in the matter of all of them, Lord, that your will would be done in each and every aspect of every prayer request. So, Lord, help us today as we pray, and even the things to which we struggle with. Lord, things that we've been praying for for a long time, maybe, maybe many, many years Help us, Lord, to not lose faith in that which we're praying for. Lord, understanding that it is your timing, it's your purpose. And unless you close the door or you say no, Lord, may we be persistent in continuing in prayer. Lord, we pray that you would work in every heart and mind. We pray that you would encourage each one that's here today. Lord, you know their ups and their downs. You know what's happening in the course of this week. You know, doctors, visits, results. Lord, you know it again, all of it. We pray that we would rest in you. We pray for those that are healing from surgeries. We thank you for, for getting them through that. And as they continue to heal through, through knee replacements and back surgeries, those that are pending, Lord, we think of Mark Ammon, who, who is getting surgery here on his back later this month. Lord, I pray that you would help that to go well. And be with others as well, too. We pray for our ministries here. Lord, we think of our archery camp this, this, uh, this Saturday, Lord, and, and the children's camp later in the month. We pray for the lives that will be there. We pray that you would work in hearts and minds, Lord. You will, you will bring to whom, Lord, you want to be there. And we pray for, uh, for relationships to be built and that, and that you would be seen through it all. We pray, Lord, continually for uh, the ministries here, and uh, we pray that you would work through each and every single one of them, and may you be honored and glorified as the gospel is presented in all aspects of this ministry, and we pray for hearts and, and, and minds to be changed, uh, which only you can do. We do pray, Lord, for our, our nation. Lord, uh, we, Lord, we ask forgiveness for the sin of our nation, for the sin of ourselves, Lord, we are no different than, than, um, than Isaiah was before you, that he was a man of unclean lips and he dwelt amongst a nation of unclean lips. But Lord, what changed Isaiah's life at that moment was he saw your holiness. And when he saw you were holy, 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 he said, woe is me. So Lord, I pray today that we would see your holiness so we would see and understand our own sin, repent of it, follow after you, turn to you, and Lord, for others that we would return to you. We pray, Lord, for our nation. We pray for our president. We pray for our vice president, each and every single one in positions of authority. Lord, we pray that you would work through uh, all that's happening around us as, as sin is blatant, as it is bathed in, as it is, uh, Lord, publicized in every capacity, Lord, we pray that in your wrath you would remember mercy. Uh, we pray this all today and so much more. We think of our missionaries. We ask you would work in the lives of each of those to whom you've called, the ones that we are able to support, and the many others who were not. God, we pray that you would further the work of your gospel throughout the world. We ask all of these things today, seeking your face above all. We thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. For those going to junior church, if you want to meet me down over here. How's everybody doing today? Good? School almost done? It's done. And it's not done for some of you, right? It is done. It's not done. It's going to be done. This week, probably. This week? 
Nope, you go farther. Man, I feel sorry for you. Oh, it'll, it'll be still done. It'll be still done. Half your summer will be gone, but it will be done. It's all right. Don't worry about it. That's good. I have, this is what I wear when I go to the beach. Because I want to keep the sun off of me. I know. It's not a cowboy hat, though. That's the only place I wear it. I don't wear it anywhere other place. But I wear it at the beach so I don't get burned by the sun. I have cancer in my family. My mom has cancer. My dad has cancer. My father-in-law has cancer, even though I'm not bloodline with them. But it's all in our family. But uh, So I try to prevent that and, and uh, wear this. Because it... What, why do you think I do wear this? I, I just explained to it, but, but, but what's this going to do? It's going to shield my face, right? Okay. It's, gonna, it's going to give me a shadow on my face because when I'm in the shadow, then I don't get burned, right? And a lot of people at the beach, they will use, they won't wear, they won't wear these, but what do they usually put up at the beach? They put up like a huge umbrella, Right? Or now they do these fancy blowing tents in the wind and all that kind of stuff. But that, that will prevent them to be in the shadow. It would help them to be in the shadow of the sun, out away from the sun, so they don't get burned. You know, there's a great verse in Psalms 91. It says this, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Who is the Almighty? Jesus, that's right. It is God himself. And so we dwell in his shadow. Now, how do you dwell in the shadow of Jesus? How do I have to dwell in this hat? If I have this hat over here, am I going to dwell in the shadow? No. Where does it have to be? It has to be on my head. It has to be near me. When you are at the beach and you have the umbrella, where do you have to be in order to be the shadow of the umbrella? You've got to be under the umbrella. You have to be close to that which is giving the shadow. And so this verse is saying that those that dwell in this secret place, those that spend time in the shadow of the Almighty, it says, and it goes on to say, he becomes a refuge, he's a fortress, he's my God in whom I will trust. And so I want you guys to know that, and for the adults in here, that we have to be close to Jesus. If we want to be in the shadow of Jesus, not the physical shadow of him, but the shadow to which he, that, that he provides for us, that he protects for us, that he is our refuge and our strength, and he's the one to whom we can trust, you have to be close to Jesus. And the greatest way to be close to Jesus is to be in here. Is to, is to not only read the Bible, but to try to understand it. And the greatest thing that you and I can do with it is apply it. And so, when we are doing that, we are finding ourselves in the shadow of the Almighty. And that's the greatest place we can be. There's no greater place. And so I want to encourage you. You might wear a hat in the sun, or you might be under your umbrella, or put lotion on and all of those things you do all of those things physically for your body but what are you doing spiritually for it and i want to encourage you guys to get into into the bible into god's word and get to know jesus more and you'll find yourself close to him and in his shadow and there's great great reward for those that search him with all their heart okay you guys can go down to junior church Have special music here. These are the words. I'm sorry. These are going to be the words she's going to be playing.
you. It's Gwen Alexander on the flute, Danielle Pereira on the piano. Thank you so very much. Beautiful, beautiful. I love the sound of that song. Let me pray as we get into our word today. Heavenly Father, we're about to open your word, see your text today. I pray that you would work in our lives through it. Lord, help us to be able to see what may be hard to see. And that, Lord, that we would understand that every jot and tittle of your word is important. Nothing is in your word that should be overlooked. And that you would help us to see you, the God of the Bible, in our time today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Joshua chapter 18 here this morning. 19, I'm sorry. Joshua 19. We were in 18 last week. Joshua 19. And in Joshua 19 here today. Just the first nine verses that we are going to look at briefly today. But today, as my hope always is, is we're going to look at the God of the Bible through it. You know, one of the greatest things that we can do when looking at any scripture is to find what it shows about God, about who God is. And texts like this today in Joshua 19, which just mentions about 17 cities of the area to which Simeon, the tribe of Simeon, would get and receive in the promised land. But there is some greater things that I want to point out. If you just look at these nine verses on their own, you won't get much application unless you dive into certain cities and things like that, which we don't have time for today. But I want us to see, as I always desire for us to see, is the God of the Bible. For us to know more of the God of the Bible. And not just for the sake of knowledge alone, but for the application for our own lives and for you and I to be in, a, to be in greater awe of who God is. So that way, you and I may, number one, fall more in love with Jesus and also to live and obey according to who God is. So my desire today is for us to see the God of the Bible in this passage of Scripture and to see Simeon and the tribe of Simeon and, and, and what all come from him and why they are given not any land, really. We have looked up to many, uh, number a couple of tribes so far, Manasseh and Ephraim and, and Judah and some others, and they all have been given borders. They all have been given a portion of land. But if you notice that when you read these nine verses, it's unlike the other ones in the way that there is no borders given to them. They are given no land. There's only two tribes that are given zero land. That is the tribe of Levi, which we've talked about. Remember, they are scattered all over, but God is using them as his spiritual advisors in many ways. The high priests come from the tribe of Levi. And so they are scattered, but now you also have the tribe of Simeon. Let me read the passage for us and then we'll dive into what the Lord has laid on my heart. Verse 1 says, And the second lot came forth to Simeon, even to the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families and their inheritance, was within the inheritance of the children of Judah. And they had their inheritance, Beersheba, and Sheba, they're, they're, they are the same. Molada, Hatzer, uh, Shua, Bala, and Azem, and Otalad, and Bethel, Bethel is, is pronounced, Horma, and Ziklag, and Beth Markabath, and Has Er Susa, and Bethlo Leboth, and Sherevin, 13 cities and their villages, Ain, Remen, Ether, Ashan, 
four cities in their villages, and that the villages were round about these cities to Balath Beer, Ramath of the south. This is their inheritance of the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families. And out of the portion of the children of Judah was the inheritance of the children of Simeon, for part of the children of Judah was... was was too much for them. Therefore, the children of Simeon had their inheritance within their inheritance of them. So again, you see no borders. All you see is cities and villages that God allows for them to live in. But he gives no direct borders like he does in the other ones. And there's a reason for this that I want you to see and realize today. If we just ended here on these verse nine or these nine verses, you will walk away not knowing much besides these 17 cities and villages. But why is the reason? And it comes back to the ultimately who the God of the Bible is. Again, as what you notice here about Simeon's inheritance is that there's no mention of borders. That there's not given specific land or or boundaries within They're only given cities and villages. Why? First of all, let me say that that they are given land that was already given to Judah. Now, it's mentioned twice in verse 1 and in verse 9. In verse 9, it explains it a little better, is that, that the children of Judah, their land was too much. And so God would allow the tribe of Simeon to live in the, in, in the borders of Judah and, and in those cities that they would dwell, be scattered there. But they are given no land, only cities and villages. And those are found within the borders of Judah, which is important to notice here. I want you to see and realize why God does this. And it reminds us of who God ultimately is. And the greater capacity of this is this. Is that when we understand who the God of the Bible is and understand that the God here in the Old Testament is the same God who is in the New Testament is also the same God who we find in our day today, June 2nd, 2024. God does not change. We're going to look at some characteristics of God through the tribe of Simeon. Let me give you a verse here right off the bat in Genesis chapter 49. And in Genesis chapter 49, Genesis 49 is Jacob or Israel on his deathbed. And he would prophesy about all 12 of his sons and their tribes or or the tribes that would come from the sons. And here's the prophecy to which he gives his son Simeon and the tribe of Simeon in Genesis 49 verses 5 and 7, 5 through 7. It says this. I'm in 46 here. Help me be the right passage here. Simeon and Levi are brethren, instruments, Of cruelty and are in their habitation. O my soul, come not thou into their secret until their assembly. My honor be thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self will they dig down or they plucked up by the roots a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce. And their wrath, for it was cruel. Here's the prophecy. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. So Jacob gives the prophecy of both Levi and Simeon that they would be scattered and divided in Israel. And now we find in Joshua 19, the prophecy is fulfilled. That Simeon, not given borders, not given specific area of land, but yet scattered through the area of Judah. 
Now there, again, why is this? What is Jacob really talking about? Well, in order for us to understand why the tribe of, of Simeon is, is given what they're given in Joshua 19, we have to remind ourselves of the story found in Genesis there. But I want us to see God through the tribe of Simeon. That's my hope today. In Genesis 34, we find a very horrific issue. In Genesis 34, Dina is the sister of the 12 sons of Jacob. The daughter of Leah, it says in verse 1, and she bare unto Jacob and went out to see the daughters of the land. Let me read this. And when Shechem, the son of Hamar, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and laid with her and defiled her. You remember this in our study in Genesis. Dina is raped. Verse 3. And his soul cleaved unto Dina, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel and spoke kindly unto the damsel. And Shechem spake unto his father, Hamar, saying, Get me this damsel to wife. And Jacob heard how he defiled Dina, his daughter. Now his sons were with the cattle in the field, and Jacob held his peace until they came. Or he was speechless. And Hamar, the father of Shechem, went out to Jacob to commune with him. And the sons of Jacob came out to the field. When they heard it, the men were grieved. And they were very angry because he had wrought folly in Israel and lying with Jacob's daughter, which this thing ought not to be. And Hamar communed with them and said, The soul of my son Shechem longeth for your daughter. And I pray that you would give her, give him to wife and make marriages with us and give us your daughters and you can take our daughters unto you. And you will dwell with us and the land shall be before you and we will dwell and trade and get possessions therein. And Shechem said to her, to her father and unto, his, unto the brothers, let me find grace in your eyes and what you shall say unto me and I will give it to you. Ask me never so much drowry and gift, and I will give according to as you shall say unto me, but give me the damsel to wife. Verse 13, And the sons of Jacob, I don't know why Jacob's not answering here, but the brothers are answering. They say to Shechem and his dad Hamar, deceitfully, because he had defiled Dina, their sister, and they said unto him, We cannot do this thing to give our sister to one that is uncircumcised, for that way there is a reproach unto us. But in this will we consent. If you will be as we are, every male of you to be circumcised, then we will give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters to us, and we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. But if you will not listen to what we say and to be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and we will be gone. And their words pleased Hamar and Shechem, Hamar's son. And the young men deferred not to do the thing because he had delight in Jacob's daughter. And he was more honorable than all the house of his father. And Hamar and Shechem, his son, came to the gate of their city and communed with the men of the city, saying, These men are peaceable with us. Therefore, let us dwell in their land or let them dwell in the land and trade therein. From the land, behold, is a large enough. Let us take their daughters for us, our wives, and let us give us them. Give, let us give them their our daughters. Only herein will the men consent to do for us to dwell with us, to be one people. If every man among us would be circumcised, as they are circumcised, shall not their cattle and their substance and every beast of the uh, be, be ours? Only let us consent unto them, and they will dwell with us. And Hamar and Shechem, his son, hearkened, and all they went out to the gate of the city, and every male was circumcised, all that went out to the gate of the city. And it came to pass on the third day, when they were sore, that the two sons of Jacob, 
Simeon and Levi, Dina's brothers, took each man his sword, came to the city boldly, and killed all the males. They slew Hamar and Shechem his son with the edge of the sword, and they took Dina out of Shechem's house, and they went out. And the sons of Jacob came upon the slain and the spoiled city because they had defiled their sister. They took the sheep and the oxen and their, their donkeys and, the, and everything that was in the city and that which was in the field and all their wealth and all their little ones and took their wives and they had them captive and they spoiled even all that was in the house. And Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, you have troubled me to make me to stink or me or to be uh, offensive morally among the inhabitants of the land and the Canaanites and the Pezzarites, I being few in number, they shall gather themselves together against me and slay me. I shall be destroyed, I and my house. And they said, should he deal with our sister as with a harlot? So they defend themselves. There's a, there's a problem here, a great problem. There's a big problem here. Simeon and Levi kill all the men because one man uh, took advantage of their sister, Dina. Jacob's not to be found. There's no consequence here to this sin at this time. Jacob doesn't give consequence. At this time, it's not until Jacob is on his deathbed does he prophesy about Simeon and Levi and say that their land, when they get to the promised land, will be divided and they will be scattered. And so, thus, we read in Joshua 19, the reason to why Simeon, or the tribe of Simeon, was not given border land because of the sin of Simeon back in Genesis 34. Now, how do we see God in this? Well, we, we see God in this way that there is consequences to sin. In that text, in Genesis 34, there was no consequence to the brothers, to the sons. So when Simeon doesn't get the land, and he has to live in Judah's land, that's a consequence to sin. There are consequences to sin. Why? Why? Because God is a holy God. God is a just God. God deals with sin fairly, but he always deals with sin. So there's consequences to sin. So we see the reality, even years later, of the consequence of Simeon's sin. If sin is not repented of, if it's not, if it's not dealt with, there are greater consequences than there is when it is dealt with. But it wasn't dealt with there. Jacob was more concerned about him. Now they're going to come kill us. Instead of saying, what are you doing? You sinned against God. Why would you kill them? I understand that they took advantage of your sister. But let God deal with that. Let's go to God on that behalf. So they lie to them and they all get circumcised and in their weakest point of the circumcision, they're slaughtered. You and I need to remember that our, in our own lives that God is a holy God and he never lets sin go unnoticed. He always notices it. That's the first thing. But secondly, we also would see, not in this text, but we see the mercy and grace of God. We actually see it in Joshua 19. Does, does God have to give Simeon any land? He doesn't have to. But he still chooses to give them something. They still have inheritance. 
God would deal with them. He scatters them into Judah's inheritance. They are divided. They would be divided later. In fact, they would kind of filter in with Judah when they are divided into um, into the two areas of Judah and Israel after Solomon would rule. When Israel is broken to two, when they're, when they're divided. And so it all comes to, to, to be what God had called it to be. But God deals with the sin, but in his mercy, which is not getting what we do deserve, and, and in his grace is getting what we don't deserve, it is evident by the tribe of Simeon too that they does not deserve any inheritance at all. But God gives them 17 cities. And God gives them villages to dwell with and in. They should have gotten nothing. So the mercy of God is also seen here. Not only do we see the holiness of God and that, and that he deals with sin, but we also see the mercy of God that, that even in the midst of all that, that every one of us desire or deserves to be dealt with. Lamentations 3 tells us that it is by the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Why are you even here today? Why are you not dead right now? It's because of the mercy of God. Sin separates us from a holy God and we are all sinners. And there is consequence to sin. The greatest of that being Death, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Separation from sin, from God, by sin. But out of His mercy and out of His grace that God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world who would live a holy, righteous life and yet be, he, he was tempted in all points like you and I are tempted every single day of our life and yet without sin. And that he would be the substitute, that, that he would take the place of you and I on the cross because sin's penalty is death and yet Christ would die in place of you and I. That he would that he would be that who substitutes on, on our behalf. And that he would take our sins and he, and he, and he lays them to his own account. And he dies. For six hours he's, he's, he's crucified. He, he's excruciating pain. Blood is pouring out of his body. He can't even catch breath. And the breath that he does say is so meaningful. Until he ends with saying it is finished, which means that it is paid in full. And Christ dies. He atones for our sin. And he would three days later rise again from the dead. And give us eternal life for those who by faith know him, trust him. And so for the tribe of Simeon, we see the mercy and grace of God. And they are given cities and villages, but not particular land. They have to dwell in the portion of Judah But not only does God do that, as I close, in Revelation chapter 7, in verse 4, it says this, And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Verse 5 and 6 talk about some tribes of Israel. 
verse 7 says, And of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. 12,000 from every tribe, 144,000 altogether that God would seal and protect for his honor and his glory in the tribulation period. And who does God also seal? 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon. So we also see the mercy of God and the grace of God in a eternal inheritance or a future inheritance beyond the promised land. This is a promise that is present and future for you and I also. Present that our eternal life is when you come to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone, you are saved at the point of salvation immediately, and that is eternal life. You are given eternal life at salvation. It doesn't just happen when you die and go to heaven. It happens then that you are given eternal life in Christ at the point of salvation, that moment that he saves you. So it's present. And then future in the way that it becomes reality for you and I when we die and go to heaven or if Christ would come and call us home or take us home, I should say. And so that being yet future. And so we have an inheritance as Peter talks about. That it is waiting for you, for for you and I, Peter says. So we see through Joshua 19 and the story of Simeon the tremendous picture of some of the characteristics or the perfections or the attributes of of God. We see his holiness. He deals with sin. There is consequences to sin. The greatest of that being death. And unless someone repents and turns to him, There is no hope beyond the grave. But then we see the mercy of God, that God still gives them 17 cities and some villages to dwell in. And God still carries them over. Even into the tribulation period, he still pulls 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon. So we see the forgiveness of God. And the reality is this, that the same God who did all of these things in the tribe of Simeon is also the same God to whom you and I know today that we must repent, that we must turn away from our sin, that we must seek forgiveness of our sins. And he does it because he took our place, because he paid the penalty for our sin, and he took it upon himself, and he died and he rose again. He defeated death and sin and all of his power. So when someone repents and turns to God, they know that their salvation is in Christ alone and in nothing else. It's not in anything else and it's not in anyone else, but only Jesus Christ alone. And they're justified, which means that they're made right, they are declared righteous, that they are simultaneously reconciled. That means that your relationship with God is restored, that you went from being separated from a holy God to now being sons or daughters of Christ. And that that reconciliation happens simultaneously at the point of salvation. And also you are regenerated that all through Christ's atonement on the cross that you and I have new life. That you and I have new hearts, new desires to follow after him. And the last attribute that I want to point out is that He is unchanging. But God doesn't change. So the question I leave for you today is this. That 
is God the same God that he was in the Old Testament as he is in, in, in the New Testament? He is. He deals with sin. There's consequences to sin. The, gate, the, the greatest consequence to sin is separation from the Holy God permanently, eternally. Where are you at today in that? The God of the tribe of Simeon is the same God of Wagon Town Chapel. Where do you see your sin today? If you don't deal with it, God will. And that begins at repentance. And if there's no repentance, then it's eternal damnation. And then to the lake of fire for eternity, as Revelation tells us. And all of those were cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death, it says. Do you view sin the way God views sin? We probably don't. Because we're not holy as he is holy. But that ought to be our desire. So today I want to encourage you that you would see God the way that the Bible teaches him. And that you would be drawn to him, turn away from sin, and drawn to him and follow after him. Maybe today you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, so I encourage you today to search your heart. The only thing that you can say is, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. But if you don't see God as holy, if you don't see God as all who he is, righteous and just, you will never see your sin for what it is, and you will die in it. And the consequence to that will be worse than having no borders in the promised land. You will have no residence in the promised land of heaven. And so, look at your sin. Deal with your sin today. I need to deal with my sin too. Not for salvation purposes. I know the Lord is my personal Savior. But we all need to deal with our sin. And come before the holy, righteous God. We can learn much from the problems and the wrong decisions of Simeon and the tribe of Simeon. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this brief time in your word. Lord, I pray today that you would help us to see you. Lord, I pray that you would help us to see, Lord, that you never overlook sin, ever. Lord, you never ease up on sin, regardless of what year we're living in, regardless of what the rest of the world thinks. The truth of the matter is, is that you are holy and we are sinners. The truth is, is that sin separates us from a holy God. The truth is that we are all destined for hell unless by grace and faith that we trust you for salvation. And so, Lord, I pray today that you would help us to see you for who you really are, who the God of the Bible is says he is not what our world says you are and that we would strive for you follow after you repent turn to you live for you and find ourselves in the shadow of the almighty we praise you and thank you for it all in jesus name amen Would you please stand as we sing in closing the first verse of hymn 503, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought Since Jesus came into my heart I have light in my soul for which long I have sought Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart 
Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. Heavenly Father, give us a good day. Lord, help us to serve you, follow after you. Lord, help us to look at our own lives, our own sin. And turn to you, Lord, knowing that there is consequences to it. Lord, may we desire to live for you and not in sin. I pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.